Hey everyone, welcome to R Tech. So, what I've got here today is GT Media's Converter X1 box. In a previous video, I did the unboxing as well as the specs and features. And in this video, I will go ahead and go through the install of it as well as the setup. All right, so as you see, we've got the converter box. We got our power cord. Does come with a remote for it and does not come with battery. So I will need to put some batteries in here. And it does come with its own HDMI cable. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing all hooked up. As I showed in the previous video, you got your antenna in here, you got your ethernet cable, you got your HDMI out. I do have a digital antenna I will be plugging into here. Okay, let's go ahead and throw the, hook up the LAN cable. Go ahead and hook up the HDMI out. Okay, and this is gonna be my digital antenna. Okay, so these actually screw together to form my antenna. And I got my antenna in here and it looks like it is powered by USB. So for this, we'll go ahead and plug it into antenna in. Okay, that's there. Now, this does have a USB port, in which case you would be using it as a DVR or recording if you wanted to. You should be able to power it through here as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into one of my power ports and power it that way instead of using this. Okay, now that these three are connected, all I need to do now is just give it some power. All right, it's now plugged in. I do need to go ahead and get some batteries for this. So let me locate some and I'll be back. All right, got my batteries. The last of my AAA batteries. It does require two of them. It did power on as you can see, because it did light up. And at the same time, it did power on my TV because it detected the signal. So let me go ahead and zoom out so we can see the TV now. All right, as you can see here, it is giving you information on the remote. Power button, your TV control zone. Got your mute button right in the middle. Volume up and down, page up and down, your navigation keys, your media control zone, multifunction keys. And you've got a little mouse button here. So we'll go ahead and go to the next. Okay, language, that's already correct. And by the way, it's showing you the back and the next. It shows a red button and a blue button. That is actually these buttons here on the bottom. Your red button is the back. Your blue button right here is going to be next. So we'll go ahead and click next since that's correct. But now it wants a time zone. All right, now let's go ahead and click next. I am in central standard. Okay, so now it wants me to go ahead and set the TV box green display size. And it's already got the little corners at each edge, which is exactly what I wanted. I want it to be this size. You can bring it down or larger if you want, just use the up and down keys. So if you want the screen size to be smaller than the actual TV size, you can do that. And it looks like you are limited to just 80% of your screen. I want it to be 100%, so let's go ahead and bring it back up. And you can't go beyond 100. All right, so let's go ahead and click next. And now it is asking for your network. So I am going to move over to the ethernet. As you can see, it also notices that it is already connected. So we'll go there. You do have an option, as you can see. You do have an option of, clip, of using Wi-Fi, which I'm not gonna do. And actually, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and go into it so it's highlighted we'll see click neck or well no it looks like okay there we go it did hit okay and now it's giving me a list of all the Wi-Fi's in the area. None of these are mine. One bad habit is I keep pointing the remote at the TV. I need to point it at the X1 converter box. So if the angle that I was putting the remote was too much and it wasn't, the X1 wasn't detecting it, that's why it wasn't detecting all of my moves. So remember that, this isn't your TV remote, this is the X1 remote, so point it at the X1 box. All right, so these aren't mine, but I'm gonna go ahead and click OK anyways, just to show you what it will do. So at this point, you will go ahead and enter in your password, and then you go ahead and click Connect to get to it. But again, this isn't mine, so let me go ahead and exit out of it. And all I'm doing is hitting the exit button right here on the remote. Hit exit again. All right, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with Ethernet. That's connected. There's the IP that it gave, that it automatically assigned to it. Now let's go ahead and click the blue button on the remote to finish. And here we go, it is now starting up. And here's some information all about the X1. As you see here, you do have an option of reading the e-manual, the HDTV Mate. It's got the e-manual for that as well. And it's just scrolling through five different pages of informational on your X1 converter box. And here's another screen for it. Again, it's going kind of fast, so. Okay, let's go ahead and click exit. Go and do a full scan is what it's asking for since there are no channels set up. All right, so it looks like it did find 34 channels. So let's go ahead and save and exit that. Again, I'm not sure how well this little digital antenna is going to be in terms of picking up a signal, even though it did find channels. In the meantime, let's go ahead and click on menu. So here is a list of all the channels that it found. And it's also giving you a guide, as you can see. Okay, so that was the channel list. From here, you can also go back and do a channel scan as well. Let's go ahead and go into settings though. You got your channel manager so you can channel edit 
You can switch list, channel sort, you can do a find, you can set your favorites. I'm gonna go ahead and exit, go back to the menu. Looks like exit, exits all the ways out. So we've got the time settings here. Time is gonna be set from the network, so I'm gonna leave that. Captions, caption default is off. You can choose, looks like two different caption languages. Audio, first audio language, you can select audio languages as well as it seems. Personalization. Okay, so the signature check, it's enabled. It says here, enable or disable checking the signature to signaling data. Sometimes try to to disable if some ATSC 3.0 RF channels cannot find service with signal lock. Zap auto exit list. You can set on, off, or delay. Info bar duration. It's currently set for four seconds by default. Show signal balance 60%. So that's the transparency it looks like. So let's go ahead and here's your restore settings. Introduction setting. Let's see what that is. Okay, it shows you the introduction guide. You got your about screen, model name, version, release, serial number. All right, here is the DVR. So you need to go ahead and select the DVR storage first. I don't have a USB hard drive connected to it, so it's going to be just the one that's built into. Which, so we're going to have to select this one here because I don't have an external connected. So let's select that one. All right, let's go back to the DVR. Now I can select the other options. You got your start PVR, you got a DVR media list, manage DVR list, manage your timer list, and you can reselect your DVR from here. Go back, got your broadcast app, click on that one. Okay, so broadcast app is not supported because I am not on an ATSC 3.0 channel. And it looks like according to this, all of my channels are actually ATSC 1.0 that I'm picking up. I think that has to do with the digital antenna that I've got. It's just not, it's just not strong enough, apparently. You got the option of a full channel scan. Okay, and then adaptive channel scan. You got manual channel scan. And then got the QAMB full scan. All right. Okay, now let's go ahead and click on the home button. So here is the home. And as you can see from the home section, you now have the option of your streaming devices. These are what's going to be pre Preloaded. You got your Amazon Prime Video. You got your web browser, an HD TV player, Netflix. You got the GT Store, App Toy TV, Movie Player, Media Center, Miracast, File Browser, App Installer, Play Store, and YouTube. You have a plus button to add your favorites. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the Play Store and see what's available here. Oh, you do need to sign in. Okay, now I'm logged in. Let's go ahead and set. Okay, and here is the app that you can install if you wanted to. YouTube TV, Google Meet, Sling, Freevee, Amazon Music, Pandora, Tubi, Prime Video, which is already installed. You got Crunchyroll. So you got quite a bit of different streaming apps that you can install on here. Let's go ahead and exit out of it now. All right, let's just go ahead and click on YouTube. Okay, so here is a YouTube video being played right now. So that works pretty good. And this is a uh, Brock Eye Philippines. All right, so let me go ahead and exit out of this and let's go ahead and check some more stuff out. So let's go ahead and click on home. All right, we got back to the main, the app screen again. Go ahead and go into settings. So from here, you got your network settings, you got your account sign in, you have your app, see what device preferences are. Okay, so you got your ballot, daytime, language, keyboard, display sound, storage, screen saver, energy saver. You can restart. Let's check out what the advanced settings are. Okay, so performance dialog, USB device mode. Let's go ahead and back out of that. All right, let's go ahead and exit again. Now the apps just shows you what was recently opened. You can see all the apps, see their permissions, exit out of that. You got Bluetooth here. It is turned off. All right, let's exit out of this. Remotes and accessories. So I'm actually not pairing anything, so let's go ahead and exit out of this. And then auto start. Okay, so you can auto start an app by the looks of it. All right, let me go ahead and exit out of the settings. And this is the information. Okay, so you can see the user manuals as well as video guides from here. Let's exit out of that. Go back up to the top. This is my, it's on Ethernet now, but it allows you to switch over to Wi-Fi if you wanted to. Exit out of that and see what this one is. Okay, so you can change your home screen view, apps orders, edit home rows, your banners and appearances. You can change your default wallpaper. Let's exit out of that. Now let's go ahead and let's check out the GT store. Okay, so it looks like there's a few other apps in here as well. Neo TV, Kodi, GT Share, Netflix, Vibe TV, Spotify, Prime Video. All right, let me go ahead and exit out of this. 
app installer. Okay, so this is if you want to do a local install instead of using the Play Store. You got your file browser. I've got nothing saved on here, but you can go through the storage device through here. It looks like you can probably do the same thing if you had a USB device connected to it. All right, let me go ahead and exit out of this. I don't have a USB device with any files located on it, but if you did, you'd be able to scan and play your videos off of your USB device if you wanted to. Okay, let's go to the TV center. Okay, so this is in case you have a video library, but this is a Kodi media player here in case you had a Kodi media center set up and exit out of here. Go ahead and go back to home instead. Okay, so this is the home screen and all the different streaming apps that you can access to it. Again, you do have the Google Play Store in case you want to add some more or you can slide load it yourself using the app installer. Go back to the menu instead. Okay, so the HD TV player is what will get you back to your TV channels. And let's go ahead and click menu. As you see, I've got a really bad signal from this little digital box. And let me go ahead and try plugging in my other one. All right, so it looks like this other antenna I'm trying picked up 18 channels. Let's see if I got a strong enough signal to, help, signal to be able to actually watch something. So let's go ahead and save and exit this. Let's go ahead and click on ion. All right, let me go ahead and click exit so we can see the actual screen. Okay, so this one does seem to be picking it up a little bit better than the digital antenna antenna but as you can see down here the signal strength is still pretty poor again that's going to be my the antenna so the better the antenna or the higher up your antenna the better your signal should be and my antenna is basically laying on the floor at the moment because I've got no place to mount it and it looks like all of these are also ATSC 1.0s and not 3.0s again you can just look here to see what version it is and because of that I can't use the broadcast app yep everything's ATSC so I can't test the broadcast app for that so let's go back to the home again so one thing to remember when you do click the home button and you get to the screen the only way to get back to the tv screen is by going to the tv center that will get you back to your tv channels now let's go ahead and go through the update for this because you do have the ability to update the x1 it can be done locally which will be plugged into the usb port or you can do it over the air let's go ahead so go to settings and then from here go to let's check device preferences okay now let's go to about your system update right here got your device name you can do a factory reset if you want to got your status the Android TV version that it's running, the security patch level, which is only 2021. Okay, so let's go to system update. Okay, and it does say that the system is up to date, so there's nothing needs to be done here. Go ahead and exit out of that. It looks like that's all the informational is on the about screen. Let's exit out of that. Okay, so that's pretty much most of the different things that you can do with the X1. If you guys have any questions or if there's anything in particular you want me to try to do a video on in regards to the X1, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do, either answering your questions or maybe I can create a new video for you guys. If you guys want to see the unboxing or the spec or the fe uh, features for this thing, I will put a link to the video at the end of this video which it actually may already be popping up. Again, in the meantime, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day and y'all stay safe out there.